And welcome to our time of worship. At this time, God calls us to gather together in spirit from our homes. For it is in this space and time where we form community, like unison singing with the strength of a common word and action, and like harmony singing with the depth and richness of different notes and themes. The Christian church is about community. And as we ascribe to that tradition with the joys and the struggles that come with it within this relationship, community with the great spirit of God and community with each other as the people of the spirit. Let us worship together with God and with each other this morning in our hearts and on our minds, in the building up of community that we are called to be a part of. And we do that by reaching out to one another and by staying connected, which we, one of the things we do is with our weekly newsletter each week, a, a, an avenue in which we can share with one another the things that are happening still here at our church. Uh, you'll notice that uh, our theme this morning, if you've received the newsletter already, is the Good Shepherd, one of my favorites. Just love the sheep. What's going on? Well, we are continuing to make masks and it amazes me how that people have embraced this challenge of making them and have continued to be dropping them off to various organizations that are in need. So thank you to all of you who continue to help support the frontline workers who are doing so much at this time to help to provide safety and uh, the medical care that we need uh, in our day to day lives. It was Earth Day this past week, and I think of God's beautiful creation. I was looking outside my window just this morning before I drove up to the church, and there was this beautiful red cardinal, and I'm sure it was the same one I saw yesterday, who seems to have made a home in the tree outside our window. A beautiful sign of spring and creation and the birds. We have continued on with our Zoom, uh, weekly chat time, video call in, whichever works better for you. Uh, we're averaging between 15 and 17 people every every week, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays at 12 noon. So if you haven't joined us yet, or if you'd like to give it a try, please do. Uh, there's a few numbers you have to use to get through, but it really isn't that hard. And if you feel uncomfortable with it, give me a call and I would be happy to walk you through it right before the time so that you can be part of the conversation. I have continued to highlight each week our offerings uh, some people have been providing them by mailing them in. I've gone by and picked them up. I'm happy to drop them off at Carol D's home. Of course, we have our online givings and par, uh, all ways of continuing to support the Ministry of Heritage United Church, even in these uncertain times. The church is still alive. God is still present with us in this time. So continue to support the, the life of your congregation. Um, and You'll be watching this, if you are, using our social media, which is such an important part of ministry. Uh, it, it was important before, but even so much more now as we've embraced this the new, newer forms of technology so that I can come into your homes and, and the Spirit of God can mix with all of us. You can see my sermons, of course, through YouTube, which I have been sending out the link to you at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. If you're savvy with YouTube, you'll see that you can actually get to them a little earlier than that if you want to. And they are, of course, always available after it's been uploaded to the YouTube channel. If you want to just listen to the message, my podcasts have been continuing. I think we're up to about 165 podcasts now. And that is just the sermon message in audio format, which, again, you can access through our website. And last but not least, I draw your attention to uh, an ad that Betty sent to me in regards to putting together our uh, recipes. Um, uh, recipes from grandparents or an aunt uncle, a, a favorite neighbor or friend, past, present uh, that you have received and there's a story behind it and you'd like to share it. We're going to be putting these all together into uh, our newest, latest cookbook and we'll be releasing them at a later date for sale um, in a fundraiser for our church. So get looking through those recipes and share with us something that uh, has inspired you or, or brought a smile to your face from your family. And that's the news for today. As we've gathered in this time, as we embrace God's creation 
as we think of those things outside our walls, uh, the, the birds of the trees, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the gardens that are beginning to burst forth with buds and uh, new life. I, I think of, of God's presence in all our moments. Uh, God is with us in this time and space. And so may the light of Christ be with us as we've gathered together today for our time of worship together. Amen. Let us take a moment and pray together. Let us pray. Loving God, we come before you with great thanks and praise. We are reminded every day of your loving presence and your promise to be with us in the hardest of times. We come together today with preoccupations and concerns. Help us set aside those for this moment and be present with you. Help us draw close to you and feel your spirit moving among us during this time of worship and in all the days ahead. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join me as we sing together our opening hymn this morning, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Let us sing. story for the young and the young at heart and I have gathered here once again with my friends who have been joining me each week. I've got Mrs. Bonnet and Peepers the Chick who have been here with me since Easter Sunday and last week we were joined by Fair Crow. Welcome back Fair Crow and we have a new friend who is joining us and this is Myrna's Moose. Welcome. We'd love to have you joining us with us this morning. It's nice to have these friends here with me when uh, I'm spending this time up here by myself and I'm missing my friends who would normally be joining me here on the chancel steps. So I'm waving to all of you back at home. I hope you're managing with your new school online. It must be kind of an interesting way of doing school without your teacher in, in, right there in front of you in a classroom. Send me a picture or a text of something you, that you've been working on. I'd, be, I'd love to hear about it. I, I'm always checking my emails and my texts. But this morning, I was thinking about how sometimes people want us to prove how God loves us. Like we're supposed to do something extraordinary, um, out of the ordinary to show that. You know, it kind of reminded me of a, of a brick wall. Let me show you what I've got here. You know, we, we kind of, we butt our heads up against a brick wall. You, you really can't break it down. It, it's, it's kind of impossible. It's too sturdy, too strong. We're, we're, we try to get through, but it's just too solid a wall that it, it would be virtually impossible. But, but what if we looked at the back side of the wall and we put these together? <gasps> Wait a minute. 
There's a hole. There's a way through. Do you guys see that? There's a way through the wall. You know what this reminded me of? Is our story from John's gospel that we hear today. Jesus says, I am the gate. Try as we might, we're never gonna get through the wall on our own. But you know what? It's not up to us. It's not up to us at all. It's up to Jesus, who is the good shepherd. Jesus, who is the good shepherd, who is the way through. He provides the way through for each and every one of us. It's not about doing some special deed because Jesus loves us just the way that we are. And so may we live that out, letting Jesus' love shine through each and every one of us in each thing we do. Have a blessed week, guys. I look forward to talking with you again next week. The scripture lesson is Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here endeth the lesson. I want to thank Pat Arbor for reading our Psalm 23 for us this week. And now I bring you our reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of a sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used the figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come, ever come before him were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to him. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. God bless these readings from the scriptures this morning. Amen. This past week, as I do every week now, I spent a lot of time working in my home office. I have the option of gazing out at a sunny day, if there is one. I can stop and go make myself a cup of coffee or get a snack. My dogs are especially happy that myself and my husband, Steve, are home 24 seven. We don't have to wear gloves or a face mask or wash our hands every time we turn around. We are fortunate to be safe inside the walls of our home. This really got me thinking about all of those on the front lines. The term front line at one time might have conjured up images of 
soldiers risking their lives while engaged with a formidable enemy. The same thing is happening now, but for those on the front lines, they are wearing a different uniform. During the coronavirus outbreak, workers across a vast array of industries have found themselves essential parts of the machine that keeps the world in motion. Required to do their jobs despite great risk, from grocery store employees or bus drivers, delivery people and pharmacy employees to healthcare workers and police officers. None of these individuals can stay at home where it is controlled and safe to do their jobs. And so they accept the responsibility and do what needs to be done for the sake of their community. I think I can say on behalf of all of us, how proud and grateful we are of them for accepting the call and rising to this challenge. In light of the scripture readings this week, I thought I would take a few moments to focus on them. This is because our passages are both about shepherds. And I see the frontline workers and first responders as modern day shepherds because they are risking their own safety to help and protect the rest of us. Back in Jesus's day, a shepherd was required to protect the sheep from predators or from falling into crevices. Their attention on the sheep must have been relentless. I can't imagine doing this, watching intently over about a hundred needy, demanding, not to mention smelly creatures who are not very bright and therefore prone to fall into holes and unable to protect themselves from predators. Now, this does not sound like a fun job to me. But maybe that's how our doctors and nurses in particular feel about us. We know the dangers of this virus, but we put ourselves at risk anyway because it's more convenient or maybe we're just not that, that bright either. But the, for the sheep in Jesus's time, even under the watchful eye of their shepherd, I wonder if even their lives could have been somewhat unpredictable. Even for us, how many times have you thought you had life all figured out and then something happens and you realize that we really are not in control after all? We seem to be facing that right now, aren't we? The fact is, life, life is always going to be full of unexpected changes that we can re render as feeling scared to and powerless about and unsure of what to do next. Like sheep, we can become needy and utterly dependent. Yet somehow, with help, we find ways to not only cope, but to move forward with purpose. A conclusion that we may come to during these times of struggle is that there is no constant in life and there really is no point in trying to reach a level of stability. That we will, will never be able to just settle and rest. But is there really nothing constant in our lives? The question led me to the readings we heard this morning, that there is more, there is a constant, there is something at work in our lives that does not change. And not only is it constant, it is influential and adaptive to those things that do change around us. And yet so often it is the one thing that we seem to always forget or at least consider last. Truth be told, I think that all too often we feel and we find ourselves knee deep in the muck of life, trying desperately just to survive. We forget that we really are not in this alone. The fact is that God is always with us, the constant and never changing loving presence in our lives. And we know this, 
Deep down, we really do. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Think about that. Say it over in your minds a few times to make sure you know it to be true. But do we really live as if it's true? Do we really, really believe it? Think of the promise of this next line from Psalm 23. I'm reading this to you from a newer version of the Bible. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. This is great writing from David. He really wants to let the reader have a better understanding just how bad things were for him at the time. He is in the darkest valley one could ever face. Another translation, it says that even though he walks the valley of death, wow, valley of death. You can't get much, much worse than that. But no matter which translation you read, the fact is that he's not afraid. He's not afraid because he knows God is with him. David really, really believes that God is with him always. But for us, when circumstances in our lives test us in stressful and painful ways, do we actually embrace the promise of this song? Look, I know it's not easy. And truthfully, I think when we're just trying to survive, sometimes it is in those moments that we forget that God is always right there with us. As the Good Shepherd is right there with us, as we also heard in our reading from John's Gospel, God has an intimate relationship and knowledge of all of us as demonstrated from this parable of the sheep and the shepherd a story told more than 2,000 years ago. It's about the good shepherd who looks after his flock. He knows his sheep and he knows them well. When several flocks are ga gazing and grazing together in the field, they are still able to distinguish the voice of their own shepherd and follow his instructions. They are part of the herd where they have found comfort and safety under the watchful eye of the shepherd, and so they stay together. It's funny how even the sheep know that their shepherd is watching over them and cares for them, but we seem to struggle with this concept. During the time of Jesus in the land of Palestine, at the day's end, the shepherds would bring the sheep down from the hills to protect them from the nighttime of the wolves and the mountain lions who are hunting their prey. Shepherds would build a pen so that their sheep would be confined and protected at the dark. These pens had walls, which were made out of rock, and stood about five feet high. On the top of the four walls were usually briars or prickly branches, having the same sort of effect that barbed wire does today. Now the doorway was about three feet wide, not wide at all. So we have an idea of what the pen was like, but especially for all of you who have worked on a farm or for those of you who have even just visited one, I have a question for you. What was the door made of? Was the door to the pen made out of wood that a carpenter had constructed? Was it made out of stones that the shepherd had piled up? What about sticks that had been laced together to form a barrier? Actually, it was none of these. You see, the shepherd himself was the door. At night, he would lie stretched out across the small opening in the rock wall. He would sleep there by the fire with his rod and his staff at the ready. If a mountain lion or a wolf came along, the shepherd would fight it off. Literally, the shepherd was the door. So we need to think of Jesus in the same way, as a door. 
He said, I am the door of safety, the door to the fullness of life, to green pastures. I am the door. I will always be there to protect you. This past week, I came across an interesting story of sorts about a door. A woman. A woman was startled at a dead sleep one night by some desperate cries of, help, help. At first, she thought she was just dreaming. Then she heard the cries again. Help, help. She threw back the blankets and headed downstairs towards their living room. Help, went the voice once again. Where are you, the woman said. In the fireplace, came the rather shocking answer. And sure enough, dangling in the fireplace with his head sticking through the flute was a burglar, upside down and not able to move. The police and the fire department got up to him eventually, though not before having to break apart the mantle and some of the masonry. Perhaps the best part of the story was, not, was what this woman did while she waited for the police to arrive. She flipped on all the lights and she started to videotape her conversation with this trap burglar. You know, I don't know what the two talked about. Maybe she should have gotten out her Bible and shared the reading of John 10. I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, or tries to climb down a chimney, is a thief and a criminal. Jesus is the living door who extends an invitation to us today, not unlike how we have greeters at the door on Sunday mornings inviting people, anyone, to come in by saying, you are welcome here. Jesus also said, I am the gate to green pastures where you can experience the fullness of life. When I think of green pastures, I only have to look out beyond the windows of the church and see the miles of farmers' fields that will soon be filled once again with the growth of the season ahead of us. A banquet of goodness here on earth. I also like to think of green pastures of, as communities of people who give and receive love. Another banquet of the goodness here on earth because God created all of us with a great capacity to love. There is no greater love and joy than giving and receiving love and being part of the communities of love. And we are able to love in this way because God loved us first and, and always will. I really like the way that an author and theologian put it. She said, God is not a distant at the cross, and God is not distant in the grief of the newly motherless at the hospital. But instead, God is there in the messy mascara streak middle of it, feeling as crappy as the rest of us. There is simply no knowledgeable answer to the question of why there is suffering, suffering but there is meaning. And for me, that meaning ended up by being related to Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God with us. We want to go to God for answers, but sometimes what we get is God's presence, constant, reliable, and unchanging. It's actually kind of ironic because as right as this author is, and as much as this is good news, that gives us strength in our lives, this is also the hard truth that so often we choose to ignore. Sometimes we don't want to believe that God is crying with us because we just want to desperately to have God make things better. But that's not how it works. This is the hard stuff that we have to wrestle with. This is real life. These are the struggles that people have, we have, you have, that I have. And easy answers don't apply. And so as the church, as a group, reaching out to the community, supporting one another, it is our role to meet people, whoever they are, on their chaotic and constantly changing journey. 
to show them and to experience in ourselves the real and relevant ways that God is present throughout it all. If we do this every day, then we will have done our job. In this morning's gospel reading, where Jesus identified himself as the good shepherd, I really was struck by the way he said, in a loving and gentle way, of course, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. I think there are certain things that we absolutely need to understand at, in our lives, and they include God's constant presence, God's constant love and grace. We need those things in good times and bad times, in joyful times and tragic times. And so we come together as a community of faith. We share our stories and allow ourselves to be vulnerable. We pray that God will open our eyes to see what we need to see and to create a space for God's spirit to work within us. We remind ourselves and each other that God is with us and we live our lives as expressions of that presence. We believe really believe the words of Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. And then we tell the world. We show the world that God is always with us. Let us open our eyes and see what we need to see. Let us open our hearts and feel what we need to feel. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we open our hearts to you. We are reminded of you as our Good Shepherd. And so we open ourselves to you with our deepest feelings and prayers. We offer you our happiness our sadness, our concern, our discouragement, our questions, and our dreams. For God is our shepherd, we shall not want. God makes us lie down in green pastures. God leads us beside still waters and restores our souls. God, our shepherd, may we be like the good shepherd and find creative ways of caring for those who struggle this day whether it is through a phone call, a card in the mail, a drive by someone's home so we can share a hello from our car to their front step or balcony, through our offerings that help to make ends meet for those most in need this day. Even though we may walk through the deepest valley, God, you are with us. And so we pray for all those who are facing their deepest valleys this day. Our hearts are heavy for the many who are ill this day, both here close to home and around our world. There are just too many to name, and it is just too hard to comprehend. Yet you, O oh God, have known and adored us before we were even born. You count the hairs on our, our every head. You accompany every person who dies and comfort every person who grieves. Even now we shall trust, and we will see your saving hand at work not through a sudden magic snap of your fingers, but in so many large and small daily items. Thousands of scientists, researchers, doctors, and healthcare professionals across the globe, sharing ideas and data across national boundaries in an effort to find a vaccine, a cure. Restaurants and bakeries and food trucks in many places donating meals to healthcare workers and seniors and individuals and agencies donating money so that businesses can buy more food and pay their employees. For you, O oh God, have entrusted us with your world and with one another, your beloved children. May all know your presence and experience your love, the compassion and kindness of all of us. God, you prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our heads with oil, our cups overflow. May we share that abundance we know in life with others. Help us to answer the call to bring a kind word, a word of encouragement, a calming presence to all who find today difficult. 
This morning, we pray especially for those who weigh heaviest on our hearts this day, as we take a moment now to pray in the silence or in our own spoken words. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in God's house our whole lives. So God, give us the strength to show up and be a witness to your goodness and mercy in all the ways we can at this time. All this we pray through our loving, risen Christ, who gave us the words to pray together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please join me for our closing hymn this morning, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. Let us joyously sing together. week in front of us. May we go knowing that God goes with us. So go into the world, followers of the Good Shepherd, living out God's truth and love, with the spirit of compassion as your guide. And now may God, our shepherd, lead us forth. May the one who gives us everything we need lead us on steady paths and righteous roads. May the goodness and mercy of Jesus Christ guide us and follow us on all the journeys we face, this day and every day. Amen and amen.